CNBC Steve Kovac joins us now with EA CEO in a CNBC exclusive. Steve, take it away. Hey there, Sarah. Yeah, Andrew Wilson joins me a day after reporting earnings. A solid uh, beat on revenue, and we're seeing the stock up about four and a half percent. Andrew, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, and thanks for being here. Yeah, this is great. Uh, we get some good uh, view of the Sims and some football club going on here. Uh, let's talk about football club, though, yeah. because that is probably the key question going into this earnings. Uh, lost the FIFA partnership, launching this new soccer game under this new branding, EA Football Club 24. Seems to have exceeded expectations. You said 14 and a half million players. Can you just talk a little bit about just uh, the revenue growth opportunity you've seen making this transition from FIFA to Football Club? Yeah, and, and first, I don't know that we lost the relationship. I think we made a very conscious decision sure. around rebranding to, to FC, something that we could control with our partners globally. Um, and what we really want to do is we wanted to be able to, you know, build more into the game. We want to be able to do more beyond the game. We want to be able to work with more commercial partners and more licensed partners around the world. And we want to be able to move much more quickly with respect to the needs and motivations of our player base. I think what we've seen is the team delivered an incredible game across console, PC, mobile and free to play in Asia. All metrics are very, very strong. The marketing team managed to get the new brand out in a really meaningful way, and our community have rallied around us. And, and the early results have been really, really positive. And our expectation now, as we think about this as the football fan platform for the world that can entertain a billion fans, is that we're just getting started, and the upside is exponential. Okay, so we're seeing tons of growth, football yeah. club, seeing growth just across the company as well, growth in gaming industry as well. Big thing happening in gaming right now, Activision and Microsoft finally landed that deal, $69 billion acquisition. Where do you stand? Is EA a target now for M&A now that this deal is done? Are you feeling acquisitive? Where do you see the M&A landscape in gaming post Activision? Well, we feel really good about the industry. I mean, earlier this week, I read an article that projected the industry would get to over 300 billion in revenue by 2030 and nearly 4 billion players. So when you think about us, the, the incredible talent that we have, the, the world-class IP that we have, the technology that we have, and a community of 700 million players well on its way to a billion or more, we think we're really well positioned to benefit disproportionately from that future. I think that Microsoft Activision is a great thing. It means that, you know, one of the world's largest companies is going to continue to invest in our industry to help us grow the industry over time. But as we think about our position, certainly as an independent developer and publisher of the world's leading interactive entertainment content, we feel really good about our opportunity. And to the extent that there are opportunities for us to be acquisitive, we would, of course, look at those where it might add new IP or it might add new teams or it might add new technology or it might add to our ability to grow the amount of people in our network and grow the engagement that they, uh, they have in our network. Let's talk a little bit about the consumer now. You talked about this on the call a little bit yesterday, just this idea that the gaming consumer might be different than your typical consumer as people are kind of tightening their budgets. It's still an entertainment property. Games aren't cheap, you know, 60, 70, 80 bucks a pop. Can you just talk a little bit about what you're seeing about consumer spending within this industry and maybe some pockets of softness that you're seeing and where it's strong? Yeah, I, I, and I think as we think about the consumers, not that the gaming consumer is different than the regular consumer. Actually, gaming consumers represent much of the world's population and certainly more of the world's population today than it did even as little as 10 years ago. I think what we are seeing, though, is that entertainment is a fundamental human need and that when you think about the amount of engagement that you get um, in the context of video games for the spend that you outlay, it, extraordinary value. And so what we're seeing broadly across our overall ecosystem is that gamers are choosing our form of entertainment over and above other forms of entertainment they might, might have chosen in years past. And we think that's going to continue to continue and, and grow.